Archaeologists, historians, and Viking enthusiasts have wondered and debated about the meaning of this mysterious figure known as the Horned Man or the Weapon Dancer. The motif shows up in various different contexts over a huge geographic range and a very wide time frame, stretching from early Anglo-Saxon England in the Migration Era all the way to Viking Age Russia. It is commonly associated with the cult of the Norse god Odin and with extraordinary shamanic rituals, as I shall explain in this video. The name Horned Man has stuck, but it's a bit misleading because those horn-like projections coming from the head are definitely birds, not horns. And their identification as birds is crucial for the identification of the motif as being associated with the cult of Odin. The Roman Empire fell during the Migration Era, or Völkervandrun, which means migration of races, and which saw Germanic peoples such as the Goths, the Lombards, and the Anglo-Saxons spread across the former Roman Empire. This is when the dual raptor or dual bird motif first shows up in the archaeological record. This brooch from France shows two birds joined at the talons. They are usually identified as raptors, such as eagles, because of the way the beaks curve. This brooch with garnets also clearly shows two birds' heads. And this migration era buckle from Switzerland depicts two curving bird heads at the bottom beneath a man holding two sticks or spears. These attractive little migration era raptor brooches are not unique. Many of this kind have been found in Western Europe, dating to the expansion of the Goths and Franks, and they always come in pairs. These two golden raptor brooches with gold chains are a bit more special. They were made by the Ostrogoths, and date to around 500 AD. Now this radial-headed Langobardic brooch from Germany dates to around 600 AD, and you can see the raptor heads on either side of the middle. Although these finds all come from Western and Central Europe, we know they are all associated with peoples who migrated from Scandinavia, so this is where the motif originated, and this is also where it persisted and developed. After the migration era, beginning in 550 AD, comes what is termed in the history of Nordic Germanic peoples, the Vendel era, named after this place, Vendel in Sweden, where many amazing helmets and other finds were discovered in boat burials. And this is when we see the first examples of the bird-horned man showing up in the archaeological record. One of the main ways the motif appears is as a full-bodied figure, sometimes imprinted onto a helmet foil, other times depicted as a 2D figurine holding a weapon and sometimes dancing. This press black was used as a die to be hammered onto thin metal foils that decorated warriors' helmets. No one has found a helmet with this exact design on it, but there are others with similar designs. This is a modern replica of a Vendel era helmet known as Valsierda 7. It has two variants of the horned man on one of which depicts two weapon dancers wearing the bird headdress, and the other shows the figure wearing the bird headdress is assisting a mounted warrior by guiding his spear. This replica of Valsierda 8 also has a foil depicting the bird horn figure guiding the spear of a mounted warrior. The dual raptor motif also persists in Vendel era Sweden in the form of brooches like this one. And like the Swedish brooch and the Langobardic brooch I showed earlier, this early Anglo-Saxon square-headed gilded copper brooch with black and yellow inlay 
has raptor heads projecting from either side of the centre. And here, again on this square-headed Anglo-Saxon brooch from Wiltshire. And on this one, the furthest on the right. The dual raptor motif, as well as the bird-horned man motif, arrive in England in the 5th century. The most famous example is on the Sutton Hoo helmet, dated to the 7th century. The foils have two weapon dancers with sword-bearing arms interlocked and spears in their other hands. This Anglo-Saxon helmet is very similar to the Vendel-era helmets of Sweden. This 6th century gilded buckle from Fingelsham in Kent is the most spectacular example of all. The figure stands naked except for his belt and headdress and holds two spears as in other examples. Some claim this is Woden, the Anglo-Saxon name for the god the Vikings later called Odin. This standing figure was found in a village called West Ilsley in Berkshire, near where I grew up. This is the detail from a helmet foil from Gutenstein in Germany, and it shows another variant where the weapon dancer holds two downturned spears, and like on the Turslunder Pressblech, it stands with wolf-headed warriors. The other main context in which the motif shows up is termed by Paul Mortimer, Wayne's, woden avatars in numerous environments. And this consists of a 2D head with some relief features and carefully crafted horns. Some are so very similar in design that they must be based on a widely known pattern. These are normally made from copper alloy, but can be gilt and bejeweled like this beautiful example. They show up in a variety of contexts, but it's never quite clear what they were attached to. They may have been mounted to bridal gear or to clothing, but no one has yet identified precisely what they were attached to. All of them come from pagan Anglo-Saxon England. I once had the privilege of holding one when filming from Moons to Ruins. as well as another mount with the same double bird motif. An apparently related Anglo-Saxon motif, found in two examples, depicts the face of a bearded man made of two birds. In the Norse mythology, depicted in 13th century Icelandic literature, the god Odin is said to possess two ravens called Hugen and Munin, which mean the thought and the memory. These ravens fly all over the world and then return to Odin to report their news to him, yet he always fears one would not return each day. Could the bird-shaped cranial projections represent thought and memory growing from the mind? This Anglo-Saxon example from Northamptonshire depicts the bird's heads meeting the man's ears, as if they are whispering their secrets to him. The identification of the motif with Odin depends on us identifying the birds as ravens rather than raptors. But Odin was also associated with eagles and was called Arnhöfte, eagle head. Another aspect of Odin we learn from Icelandic sources is that he was called Girtur, meaning spear god, and that he possessed a powerful spear called Gungnir. That so many examples of the motif possess spears again points to Odin, or an earlier version of him. Odin was said to have only one eye, yet the horned spear dancer usually has two, although in some examples, such as this one from Rupokra in Sweden, he is missing an eye, indicating either that Odin was not always depicted with one eye, or that the dancer sometimes depicts Odin himself and other times depicts a ritual dance associated with him. Next we move to the Viking Age, into which the motif persists. 
The Viking era preserves the motif in the form of the weapon dancer also, as in this silver mount. But we also see more 3D representations, like this beautiful example found near Lake Ladiga in Russia, an area that was settled by Viking traders. Now we can see the birds come out of the side of the man's head, but he is not wearing a helmet. As we can see, his hair is engraved on the back of his head. Danish Viking examples sometimes show the birds coming from the side of his head too, but in this recent find from Denmark, the man is very clearly wearing a headdress with the damaged projections, which we must presume were birds, strapped to the front of his head. This example from Anglo-Saxon Dover makes it absolutely clear that a headdress and not a helmet or man with horns is being depicted. Although here the birds are attached to the top of the head. There is another variant of the motif which may indicate a continuation of Bronze Age religion. This Viking era fragment of a picture stone from Stora Valle in Ruta Parish on the island of Gotland in Sweden was discovered in 2013 by Sigmund Earl. It depicts a figure who appears to be wearing the horned headdress and is hovering over the crest of a wave while seemingly guiding the course of a Viking ship. An explanation proposed by Earl is that this depicts Odin himself guiding the spirits of the dead as they sail into the afterlife. The Nordic Association of Boats and the Afterlife is well established and you can learn all about it in my video series on the Nordic boat cult. You can find the playlist on my channel. The fragment seems to depict the same figure as the one on the much older helmet foil from Valsiera 8, where a horned man is aiding a mounted warrior, as though it were Odin guiding the warrior's spear in battle. Another clear parallel to the Ruta fragment, one which Earl missed, is this Iron Age petroglyph from Bog Lursa, known as the Branskog Shepet, which depicts a religious motif of an elk-headed ship being guided by a mysterious figure. Even without the horns, the similarity is too great to be coincidental, which means this may be the oldest depiction of Odin that survives or at least of a god from which he derived. You can bag yourself a t-shirt or a hoodie with a weapon dancer on it, or even one with a Wain, a Woden avatar in various environment motif from Anglo-Saxon England. All you gotta do is head over to my Teespring store and you can see t-shirts with those designs and many others there. Actually, if you look just beneath this video, you'll see a line of garments from the store and if you click on any of those you get taken over to it. Have a look through and what better way to keep this ancient motif of the Woden weapon dancer alive than to wear it in a brand new context. You can learn a lot more about Odin, archaeology and all kinds of myths and gods of ancient Europeans if you subscribe to this channel, Survive the Jive. And you also get very exclusive and unique content only available to patrons if you become a patron on Patreon or Subscribestar. For those patrons, I do special content, special streams, book reviews, uh, analysis of genetics, all kinds of special stuff that only they get. And these patrons are vital to keep this channel going. I want to carry on celebrating European culture by making high quality, well-researched videos for everyone to watch for free but I still need some help. So support this channel and in the process, get access to exclusive content.